hey there and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll be sharing my advanced mortgage amortization mod. Now this module is meant to be used or to, to be plugged into your existing real estate model. So the thinking goes uh, that this amortization table is on one tab. You can grab it, pull it into your model, and then it's just a matter of linking from your cash flows to the amortization cash flows here. The assumptions in blue font cells are already prepared for you. Calculation module is done as well as a couple of outputs, in including some more complex uh, debt metrics, lender yield, duration, average life. Uh, what's also interesting uh, and what makes this module advanced is it allows for up to four interest calc methods, 3360, actual, actual, actual 365, actual 360. Uh, it also has the ability to model both fixed and variable rate debt. And then what's cool is the payment itself can either be dynamic, meaning the payment adjusts or re-amortizes when you're using a, a, a atypical interest calc method or variable rate such that over your amortization period, you fully amortize the loan. You also have the ability to use a static payment, um, even with variable rate or um, a atypical interest calc method. The result of that, of course, is that at the end of your amortization period, there is some balloon uh, left outstanding, either in your favor or against, I guess. Um, so but there's an adjustment in that very last year. But there are loan structures where you'll see a, a static, a flat payment uh, across the loan, even when you have an atypical interest calc method or a variable rate. And so this model allows you to do both. It really, it covers almost every scenario that I could think of in terms of, of how debt, uh, how a senior mortgage piece might be structured. So with that said, let me walk you through the assumptions. Uh, I'll then talk through a couple of those metrics I mentioned and then show you how the calculations work. And then feel free to ask me any follow-up questions as you begin to use this module in your own models. So again, blue font cells, our inputs, we start with lender name, just a descriptive input. We then have interest calc method. Now in a traditional kind of standard basic amortization table, you use a 3360 interest calc method. What that means is, is that you assume 30 days in a month and a 360 day year. And therefore to calculate the interest on, on a monthly payment, you take the annual interest rate and you divide it by 12. Or in other words, you divide it by 360 divided by 30, right? And that gets you some interest amount. And so if we were to say, let's just go all interest only, the interest amount stays the same in each month. And that's because the, the uh, methodology for calculating interest or, or the ratio of days to the total number of days in a month, the total number of, of days in the year is the same for each month. And therefore the interest amount due in each month stays the same. And this is the most standard mortgage uh, interest calculation method that you'll find. But you can also toggle, say, to an actual actual. And what this assumes is an actual number of days in the month and an actual number of days in the year. And so if you come up here and you click this little plus button, this will expand those calculations. And out here to the right, you'll see days in the year. So this period ending January 31st, 2021, the, the previous year or, or the year up to an ending January 31st, 2021 has 366 days in that year. There are 31 days in that month. And so to calculate the interest, what we do is we take the 366 and we divide it by the 31 and that gives us 11.80. And then we just simply take the interest rate in that period four and a half and we divide it by the 11.8 that gives us a periodic rate of 0 0.0038 or roughly what is this 0.38 percent we then take that we multiply it by the beginning balance in that period and it gives us the interest in, in that period but because each uh period has a different number of days and a different number of total uh, day, days in that month and a different number of total days in that year you get a, a varying interest amount or interest amount that's due in that period. And so when the, uh, 
when the period is interest only, meaning only interest is due on the loan, the debt service payment here, G, a column G, is equal to the interest due. But if we were to say go to, let's, let's make this amortizing, you'll see that the interest due is less than the monthly payment due. And, and that's then that means then that there are some amortization or some principal due in that period that pays down the loan. And as the loan pays down, the amount of interest due, uh, relatively speaking, decreases. And so that is the different interest calc methods. Now, another feature of this model that I'll bring in at this point is is the monthly payment, the debt service payment that's due each month, is that flat, meaning it never changes, or is that dynamic, meaning does does the int does the mortgage reamortize or the calculation of the amortization recalculate each period such that the 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 debt service payment will vary each period depending on the interest due or the, the method for calculating interest and the amortization period. So for instance, right now we're using a dynamic payment, meaning this payment adjusts each period. And the result of that is that the end of a 360 month term that fully amortizes, meaning there's no interest only, the payoff at the end of this will be zero. Of course, right? You fully amortize down to zero. But if we say go to a static payment, or in other words, the payment does not change, there will be some balance either for or against uh, the borrower at the end of the amortization period. And again, that's that's due to the variation in the interest. And as the interest varies, the amount of principal that pays down does not perfectly amortize to zero. And the, and the only way to do that is to create or to in, use dynamic payments. But your mortgage may or may not have that feature, and so that's why there's an input. Additionally, we have the ability to choose between fixed and variable interest rates. So when you toggle the variable, the rate input here changes and it just tells you detailed. And then you'll notice this column H becomes blue font cells. And here's where you can then model out a custom variable rate schedule. So maybe you start at a four and you think it's going to go to 410 and then 415 and 420. 425, 430, et cetera. And so you might use, say, a, a, a forward-looking, um, say, a U UST uh, or a, a treasury rate curve, and then you add some spread above that, and that might become your, your, your kind of your rate curve. But what you'll see is if we were to use static payments in the same way that because the interest due in each period varies – there's some balance either for or against, and in this case, it's actually against um, the uh, for or in favor of the borrower against the lender. Meaning, at the end of the the loan, the the borrower is actually overpaid in principal, one hundred and fifty two thousand, and so they're they're either the the loan payment at that point will be less, or the lender will basically the loan amortizes slightly faster than the amortization schedule itself. And so to correct that, you go to a dynamic payment. But again, the your loan may or may not have that uh, that feature. So that is a variable rate. Let's go back to fixed. Now I should note when you go back to fixed, these values don't change back. And so you have to come and just make sure that so just grab any formula along here and put that back in place or grab a fresh copy of this model and it will automatically have those formulas in place. Then we have loan amount, that's pretty obvious. Next we have loan fee, okay? So loan fee again is, is some fee that's uh, charged by the lender at closing. And what happens is the amount that the lender funds is net of that fee. So if the loan amount's 30 million, and there's a fee of 300,000, it from the lender's perspective, the lender actually only has to come up with 29.7 million in this case. That's that's the lender's outflow at loan funding. Then we have the rate again, assuming a fixed rate, this is the annual interest rate of the loan. So next we have amortization. And amortization is the number of months uh, assuming no interest only uh, over which the loan fully amortizes, meaning goes to zero. 
Uh, and the amortization must be at least uh, or cannot be greater than the or cannot be less than the term. So, for instance, if we put 300, you'll see that we get an error. Um, and so what, let's take the term to 120 months. And what you'll see here is over a 120 month term with 360 months of amortization, what happens is you have 10 years of loan and then in year 10, there's a balloon balance. There, there's some amount unpaid because the loan fully amortizes over 360 months. Now, if we were to amortize over 120, what you'll see, term of 120, amortization of 120, what happens is at the end of the year 10, your balance is zero. It fully amortizes or it fully pays down to zero. And what we can add to this is some period of interest only, meaning over some period of months, the payment is simply the interest due in that month. So we could say 120 months, and the result of that is the amortization is irrelevant to this. In fact, we could even take this to 360 and it's irrelevant because the term of the loan is 120 months, the interest only period is 120 months, and therefore for the first 120 months or the entire term of the loan, the, the uh, payments due are equal to the interest due in that month. And the consequence of that, is, of course, is there is no principal ever paid. And as a result, the payoff is, uh, of the loan at the end of year 10 is equal to the loan amount going in. Now let's take this back. Let's say fully amortizing loan. So this is a traditional residential loan, a 30-year residential loan, no interest only. 360 month term, 360 month amortization over the 300 or 360 months or the 30 years, the loan amortizes all the way down to zero. Now let's come, let's put the interest calc back to 3360. Uh, we can leave the payment type dynamic, static, it doesn't matter because um, on a 3360, the payments dynamically will still be flat. And now let's talk about some of the metrics. So the first is lender yield. Uh, in the United States, this is called APR. And this is a metric that calculates the yield that the lender gets on the loan, inclusive of any fees. And so when there are no fees, the, the yield will be equal to the annual interest rate on a fixed rate loan. So we could say zero here, and you'll see that the lender yield becomes equal to the annual interest rate. Now you can start playing around with this though. Let's imagine you go one and a half, one percent loan fee. Now the lender yield goes to 4.59. What if we did a 10 year term, the lender yield increases even slightly. Uh, what if we did 120 months of interest only, lender yield drops just a touch. What if we did a slightly different interest calc method, maybe an actual actual. Lender yield stays the same. What about actual 365? So it largely stays the same, but you can kind of play around with that lender yield. Now, in terms of how it's calculated, you'll find that in column M. Uh, here's the lender's cash flow. And then the lender yield is you is calculated using an IRR on with monthly periods in IRR times 12. It, you do not in the United States to calculate the lender yield or APR. You do not use X IRR. You use an IRR times 12. Uh, of course, payoff, which we've already discussed. We have duration. And let's come back to uh, 3360. Duration is the number of years that pass from the loan kind of funding date, time zero, until half of the time-weighted present value of the, the debt service or lender cash flows have been paid out. Uh, de duration is used by lenders to determine kind of the sensitivity to interest rate changes. Um, and it is uh, with assets such as a loan are often paired with the duration of the liabilities that the lender might have. And the idea is a lender would want to pair like similar duration assets with similar duration liabilities so that the balance sheet isn't overly sensitive or or exposed to interest rate risk right so this is a this is a, a metric that you may or may not ever use um, but is important to understand it's calculated if you're interested in columns w and x next we have average life 
An average life, it's a non-time value of money metric. Duration is time value of money. Uh, average life, or also known as weighted average life, is a non-time value of money metric. It's the number of years that pass from the, the kind of the loan funding date, time zero, until half of the time weighted principal is repaid, okay? So uh, think of it as kind of that the, the point when roughly half of the principal has been repaid. Now in the case of a, a balloon such as this, right? Where, or or a, a structure such as this where you have a big balloon in year 10, most of that's gonna happen right, right up prior to the end of the 10 year term. But if we were to say do a 360 month uh, term, so a fully amortizing loan, you'll see that that average life gets closer to the center of the 360. And in fact, as the interest rate gets closer to zero, you'll see that this gets closer to 15 years. And so it would be right at 15 years if there was no interest paid. It was if, if the loan was just purely, the, the debt service was going towards principal, the average life would be right there in the middle between the halfway point to, to 30 years on a 30 year fully amortizing loan. So, uh, and then the final one, of course, is monthly amortization payment on a static. That's going to be this value on a dynamic. It will look like that. So uh, that is my advanced mortgage amortization module. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Otherwise, thanks for your time.